From the grips of a wicked king, they escaped and made their way to the southeastern part of the Volta region. Their subgroup of arguably one of the most feared ethnic groups in Ghana, but are noted for their homeliness and beautiful sights. God's love, mercy, and favor. Now that's not a sentence. Those are typical names of persons among this group. This edition of People and Places focuses on the Anglo state, its people, traditions, and customs. Like the others, their story will blow your mind. Let's take a breather, meet our guest, and get into the conversation. Miawezo, Nyenkoenye Wanda Ami Hagan, and this is People and Places. Good morning. Me kumicho Ghana Web. Nyenkwenye Wanda Hagan. Um your producer. Um Lord, we have a few things to present to you. This morning, I show this calabash to the rising sun, to the midday sun, and to the setting sun. I show the calabash to the rising sun, the midday sun, and the setting sun. And I show the calabash to the rising sun, the midday sun, and the setting sun. Oh, Anglo Kochikolo. Anglo Kochikolo. We have a very renowned personality to help us in this conversation. He is the Agbotadwa to the Togbite uh, Agbozo Stu of Jelukope. He's also a historian. He's a retired headmaster. He is an author and he's most importantly a spokesperson to the Awomefia of the Anglo state. Let's meet our guest. Togbi Indi. Indi. Okay. Ate. And thank you for joining us on our show. So, I would like to start with a very interesting question. The perception out there is that Ewes are very feared. Do you know this? Yeah, um, I was also a victim of that fear. When I left Accra Training College in 1970, I was posted to Nzima. Mm. And during my interaction with them, I realized that all Evis are feared because they don't know the various dialects that we have as Evis. Mm. Well, before I went, there were Evis from Benin and they were practicing Juju. So, they regard all Evis mm -hmm. as coming from Benin. And I also heard somewhere that other people, would, when their children are crying, they will tell them, I will ask Anglo man to come and kill you. So that perception is there. But the fact is, we are mysterious. We don't talk much. When things are happening, we say, do no matter what you stay in the town, but you don't understand the issues of the town. Um, it uh, supports Chinochebe's proverb of uh, a hawk 
went to scoop a bed for a meal. He took a darkling and the manager looked at it and didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. So the man asked, when you scoop the young darkling, what did the mother say? He said, well, you just look at me and then send it back. So he brought it back and then he came to pick a young chicken. And the mother was shouting, throwing the hands in the air. And the hawk said that was all that he could do. So they fed on that. And because we are very reserved, if your offenders will not say anything, but that doesn't mean you will not retaliate. Mm. And the retaliation is even more than verbal interactions. Yeah. The current issue ha happening during the registration, we had Anglo chiefs, they are just quiet because we know how to handle those situations mm. better. If you go and shout, you are only shouting. Why you are shouting, you not solve the problem. You know why to help. Because I've always said, even though the sea is very wild, if you pour it into uh, a calabash, you cannot break the calabash. Mm. The sea that destroys building, you put in a calabash. There is a solution to every problem. And so, also, mm -hmm. we know that the fight it's not in the size of the dog, but a fight in the dog. Mm. Yeah. So you, says, you you won't you won't talk about it, but you deal with the issue in your own way. Sure, every action and reaction. So then it means that the fear people have is the outcome of their actions. Mm. Because if you tell you the what is going to happen, then you tune your mind and you will even predict the direction that you will go. So in effect, you would say Eves should be feared. No, I will not say. I say you should not. You should not offend the Eves. Okay. Sometimes the soul will fight for you, even if you don't ask him to do anything. But it will fight for you. Okay. Yeah. Great. Every ethnic group yeah. has a history. Yes. And it was because of something that they came to settle on certain yeah. lands. So, what is the story of? the Anglos, as far as migration is concerned? Yeah. The Anglos had three versions of their origin. The first origin was that they were on the lost continent. The lost continent, some people call it Atlantis. Mm. But we call it Mu, and Mu. Mu. Okay. Yeah. It was a name to the river, Amu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Volta River is Amu. They gave that name to that river. Now, from Mu, which was between Asia and North America, mm -hmm. they migrated westwards and landed in China. The word China is an every word. That's the, 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 the deity that gives water or rain. China? Yes. It's an every word. Yes, you call it China. China. Oh, China is a deity. Chi, water, China, yeah. and then na, na gives. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So whenever there was drought in Anglo land, we pray, I mean supplication to the China de deity, mm. and it gives us rain. So that was the deity we gave to the, the China people. Then we move on to India. So Hindu also. The deity was also what we left there. Mm. Then we went to Mesopotamia. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible story began. Now this one is reinforced by the fact that if you read the Dead Sea Scrolls, mm -hmm. I was in Israel and I, I saw that the first sentence in Genesis was in the beginning, not in the beginning. In a beginning. Yes. Yes, meaning there should be other beginnings. Mm. And that was why it is suppressed that it should, they should not change the Bible. In the same Bible, they said man should live in union with God's creation, mm. not to have dominion. Mm. And it makes sense to me because if you are According living in union... According to the scrolls? Yes, okay. if you live in union, you not destroy the trees, you not set fires. Because you know they are because you are. Mm -hmm. But if you say you have a dominion, it means you have a control over God's creation. But it's not you who created those things. Now, in the same Dead Sea Scrolls, they refer to Abraham as 
Abraham the Eve. Mm. You know, they all went through a lot of translations from the Hebrew to Greek to Romans mm. to English. So there are certain words which have changed. If I say you live in union, have dominion, it's very easy to enter space one another. So that was one story. The second story was that the Hebrews were part of the Hebrews. And so they stayed in Egypt together and then moved to Palestine. They were there when Nebuchadnezzar conquered the Hebrews mm -hmm. and brought them to Babylon. But during the attack on Palestine, some of them escaped. Mm -hmm. And the Hebrews were those who escaped. When they escaped, they went back to Egypt. And from Egypt, they moved to Sudan. And they stayed in Khartoum. The word Khartoum is Khartoum. Okay. You know the Sahara Desert has the red, the egg. Yeah. I mean there is a rocky part, there is a stony part, there is a sandy part. Yeah. And Kertu means sandstorm. Ker is sand. Mm -hmm. Storm is a, a home. Okay. Yeah, so because there is a sandstorm, they say the sun is just forming a storm. Kertu. Mm. That is inside the sandstorm. They were there, but because of the harassment by the Arabs, they moved eastwards to okay. Abyssinia, now called Ethiopia. Oh, okay. Now, when they were in Ethiopia, people from India came and attacked them, seized some of them, and sent them to India. So, if you go to India today, there are people who are just as black as you and me. Oh. Yeah. Because they could not withstand the incessant attack, they moved now westwards. Mm. to the Niger Bend. So they were there where the old Ghana Empire was established. Okay. And the word Ghana is an every word. It's a high name. Ghana. Ghana. We call it Ghana. Ghana. Yes, there is a drum we call Ghana. Now that one, don't beat it. You just strike it with the, the, the talking stick. It sounds like the high name. Oh. Yeah. Now, the emblem is also that of the high name of the Asian Ghana Empire. Mm. Now, Asian Ghana Empire was overthrown by the Mali Empire. Mm. Now, one of the most famous chiefs or kings of the Mali, Mali Empire was Mari Zata. Now, Mari Zata yeah. means the man resembles the lion. Zata is lion mm -hmm. in every. Yeah. So if you say the man resembles the lion, the name was conferred on him because of his uh, bravery and fierceness in battle. Now, when he died, you know, normally when a, a big tree dies, a small tree grows. The other successors were not as powerful. Okay. So the Songa Empire came and conquered them. Our people could not withstand the Songa Empire, so they moved now eastwards to Ilefe in Nigeria. Yeah. Okay. They were there also when the Oyo Empire started. The Oyo Empire and the Ashanti Empire, they all emerged at the same time. Okay. So they moved again westwards to Tado in Benin. They the, left the Nigeria? Yeah, Ilefe. And then when they came to Tado in Benin, the Oyo Empire was chasing them. So they moved again to Noche in Togo. Oh, okay. Now, I'm talking of the whole Ewe people. They were moving like one group. Group. Because that was the language they were speaking. That was a lot of people moving at the same yes, time. Yes, there were some hundreds. Mm. The third version was the average descent from Ham. Okay, before we move to the third yeah. version, you mentioned that they settled at um, Ileife yes. at a point. Yes. I know that the Gans also settled at Ileife. Yeah. Yes. So, do they have a relation over there? That's a relationship. In fact, Ga and Dangbe, they are the God family from Jacob. You know, okay. Jacob had 12 sons. Yes. One is God. God. Mm -hmm. So Ga and Dangbe, God. Ga and Dangbe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then the, we are the Judah. 
Mm. They raised out the Judah group. Yeah, from the tribe of yes. Judah. And even at Kans, they are the Levites. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you, see, you all stayed in all Ghana together. Mm -hmm. And on the, the day of migration, they moved southwards. So they entered the forest areas of Ghana. But we went eastwards to Ilefe before meeting here again. Oh, okay. Okay. Sure. So when they reached Ilefe, they made the Yorubas there. And the Yorubas were still carrying the art of divination. And so they acquired that art and used it in their subsequent migration. The, they have some words which are Yoruba words, mm. like Meiji. Meiji Yoruba means two, and Meta means three. So when there's a Tula Meiji, which is um, when they cast the Afan, the message they receive will be Tula Meiji. And what is the Afan? Afa is an art of divination. You want to inquire into the unknown, into the spiritual realm. Because if I want to know what I must do for a living, I can go to the Afan people and they divine for me. Okay. If I'm sick and I want to know the cause of the sickness, you have to go for divination. If somebody dies, mm. so I'm going to the hospital to ask for cause of death, you can divine and know the cause of death. Okay. Whether it's spiritual, whether it's by human. Yeah, so um, as I was saying, the third one says that we are descended from Ham. Mm. Uh, you know, Noah had Noah's three sons. sons, Shem, Ham, Japheth. So the Kushites, they're also from Ham. Mm -hmm. We make reference to. Uh, evidence that we were once there. Now these three sons found their settlements mm -hmm. and Ham settlement was called Ajatome. Ajatome. Yes. And so the language spoken there was Aja language. Mm -hmm. Now today when you come I can say Mizau, Mizau, Mizau. It's a coded word. I'm asking whether you're from Aja. Oh, okay. You know in those days when people were not safe Without somebody entering your domain, you must find out whether it was an enemy or a foe. So the code language is Miyazawe, Mizao, 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 Mizao. And the response is Miyazawe ago. Then when they left Aja during the confusion of languages at our Babylon, they moved to the Nile Basin. Mm -hmm. And they call that Nile Sada. Sada River. Okay, mm -hmm. to understand something, it means that the Ewes were the ones building. Yeah, they were part of the people building. Yeah, because all the people were not only like one group of people, yes. because they were speaking different. They were speaking first one language, and that got confused the language. And it then they granted. separated. Yeah, separate. So you also follow the one who can speak your language. Oh, okay. So the leader was Aga at that time. Okay. So Aga led them to settle at the banks of the the Nile River, Nile they call River. The River. Okay, we'll come we'll come back to yeah. the rest of the story. Okay. We are learning all about the history of the Anglo state and its people. This is people and places. Let's take a breather. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still on the migration of the Anglo people. Mm -hmm. You mentioned three accounts yes, of the, the migration. Third one. The third one. I mean, how did all three come about and which stands for the Ewe people? Or you use all three accounts to describe your history? Even in the Bible, mm -hmm. creation of man, we have two versions. Mm -hmm. The first one said, he said, let's make my you know, own you know, image and yeah. likeness. Mm -hmm. Man, male and female, he created them. But the second one, God took the earth and mold man and gave the man the name Adam. Okay. But later he felt that Adam was alone. So he took the rib. There are two versions. Mm -hmm. But there is a merging point. Okay. So it is the origin <coughs> from 
the lost continent to the dispersal at um, Palestine and then to the story from Mesopotamia. Mm. There the three sources are coming from. But if you look at it, they are all just story being told by those who were alive at that time. Okay. So if those who gave us the Mu story, mm. they were there and they wanted to transfer this knowledge, then the Mu story is also true. Okay. And if those who were in Palestine were telling the story, then their story would also be true. And those who were in Mesopotamia, then their also story would be true. But from there, from Egypt right down to here, the same story. Now, when the Oyo Empire mm -hmm. was emerging, yeah. they wanted to use the Avis as slaves. So they migrated. Okay. So when they came to Tado, which is Benin, there were some wars between them and the Yorubas or the Oyo Empire. Then they moved to Nochi and settled there. When they came, there were some Avis already there. At Nochi. At Nochi. Okay. At Nochi. Before the migration, some families like to move before others move. Okay. So when they came, they, they made the areas under Tobia Gokoli. And so they settled, Gokoli gave them land. But I'm wondering how there were already some areas if they were moving in one group. Yeah. As they move, they have family heads. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't a centralized government. Okay. So they were just moving for safety. So mm -hmm. when you come here, and you realize that uh, your people are suffering, you can move without asking permission from, from the leader. But the, the major group, the major group continued to stay. Okay. So those who left earlier, a faction was the, the Ngoche people. And so when they came to meet them speaking the same language, they, 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 they felt they were at home. Okay. So I will probably give them a portion of the land. And in Moche, they call that Dogbo. 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 Okay. That's the name given to them. All the very speaking people. Which means the Dogbo people, if I'm right. Yes. Okay. The Dogbo people. Before you go on, who, who was Agokoli? Yeah, Agokoli was the king of the Moche people. Okay. Yeah. So they were the people who were sitting there before the Dogbo. The Dogbo. Came. So <clears throat> in Nochie, so many things happened. Mm. But what was told us that there was somebody, a relative of uh, Agokoli, mm -hmm. because they knew that the world were strangers. He would go to the village and then harass the people. So they would go and pick their animals to come and feed on. As in the people of Nochi were harassing the people yeah, of the Dubo. Okay. Not all of them, but some of them. Okay. One of them is Senwa. Mm. was a very notorious relative of Agakoli. So one day, the people were having funeral. They were playing. They were beating their drum. Senwa came, as usual. God drank and started to cause confusion. As a result, there was a fight between him and Aga, one of the elders of the Dubo. Senua used a sharp instrument and hit Aga. And Aga started to bleed. Okay. The elders took Aga home. And the issue was reported to Aga Koli. Okay. So Aga Koli sent emissaries to have Aga sent to him for treatment. But the elder refused. No Aga long, refused. No, the elders of the Dubo refused to okay. send Aga yeah. there for treatment. Okay. Not long after, an elder died among the Dubo. Mm. So they decided to punish Senua. So they sent word to Aga Koli that the one Senua fought died. Okay. So. Someone died, but yes. it wasn't Aga. No, it wasn't Aga. But they sent word that yes. Aga had died. Yes. That is one of the reasons why the Anglos are feared. You see what they did? Because they wanted to punish Senua for harassing them. So by custom and tradition, 
if you kill, you must also be killed. Okay. So Selma was handed over to the Dogbo and the two counsel and killed him. Okay. Yeah, as a retribution or retaliation. So to our colleague, Selma had a justified punishment. Okay. The Dogbo now wanted to observe the funeral rites for the Aga who was perceived, perceived Aga. Yeah, perceived Aga mm. who was perceived to be dead. Now during the funeral there was drumming and dancing. Okay. And there were a lot of drink and food. So one of them made the infamous statement that we are Adjas from Ajatomi, the revenger for the living. Okay. So that was exposing them. In, yes. Mm. Because that was out of drunkenness. He said, Mia only a zao, so a jatum. I'm Makmakubo from Hombialao. Meaning, we are just from a jatum, the revenger or the avenger of the living. Okay. So when this statement went to Agakoli, he got to know that. Uh, he had our, been lying. Uh, yes, I, so he started to punish them. The first thing he asked them was to build a wall around the Nangoche city. Mm. So the people that the ball had to start to knit, switch, and they had to go and fetch water from the Hahor, which was about three and a half miles away. And when they were even needing the, the switch to build a wall, the wall was about 24 feet wide and 80 feet high. Wide? Yes. If you go to Ngoche today, you can see the remnants of the wall. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was a very big and mighty wall because they were doing it for, as a form of punishment. Then, apart from that, it started to wage war on seemingly hostile states around Ngoche. Mm. And he made sure that the ball went to fight for the Ngoche state. Oh, mm -hmm. so he would intentionally start war and yeah. then the balls will have to, to fight to, yeah, for them. To fight. So, can I say mm. that from your narration, yeah. the balls started their own problems? Yes, it was caused by and them. And they were the ones who made Agokoli wicked? Yes, yes. Mm. Now, this is the Anglo version. I will tell you also the Moche version. Okay. Now, so, when the punishment became unbearable, the elders decided to leave. Mm. So, the first strategy they used was that any waste water should be poured on the wall. And they must also desecrate the wall. The desecration came, though women who were in their menstrual cycle, were to use the water they used on the wall. Mm. Because spiritually, by desecrating the wall, it would be easier for them to break it through. Okay. Yeah. Which and means said, the wall had a spiritual yeah, um, something attached to it. Before you build a house, you must sanctify the area. Okay. So, before they leave Mochi, they sent people as spies. One of them was called Tali. Tali was a twin. Tali, as in Togbe Tali. Togbe Tali. Okay. His twin brother was Tala. Okay. So Tali stayed in Ochi with the people. Was he a Dogbo? Yeah, he was uh, a Dogbo okay. man. And his brother Tala, he left Ochi to Aukugwa. Oh, okay. And settled in Aukugwa with her. He was also a, a mystic. And he could treat people from madness, people from all other diseases. It was that which made Aoku Guahini to allow him to stay in his palace. Oh, okay. Because there was a, an a occasion when his son was sick and they brought Tala there and Tala treated him. The Aoku Guahini? Yes. Tala okay. treated him. And Tala was there when Ose Tutu okay. came from Denchira. Mm. to visit the uh, Ukuguahini and you saw Salah there in the, as part of the court. 
of the chief. So, so right now we are talking about the um, Tala. 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 The Can we finish of with uh, the Noche story yes. and then Charlie, and then we move to Chala? Okay. So the brother Sally, the Charlie, twin brother of Sally, yes. on the day of departure, but mm -hmm. before that, he was sent out to look for unoccupied lands with the crew occupied. Okay. When so he was escaped. a spy, and he wasn't the only one. Other elders of the Dobo came and then they spotted all these areas. But that how was he able to spy if there was a wall? Oh, there was a gate. Okay, and they were allowed out? They, they were allowed out because they were farming outside. Oh, okay. Yeah, so okay. they only built a wall because there was Agbogbomaga, where they were staying, and Agbogbomavia, where Agokoli and others were staying. There were two walls. Oh, okay. There was a wall for the Ngonche people. And there, there was oh, a bigger one where oh. the dogs were also staying. Okay, um, okay. So when he came and saw this, then he went to report that they could live. They mm. could live here. They could live in Ngoche and relocate. So giving the women those tasks to soften the wall mm -hmm. by pouring water, waste water on those things. When the day of departure came, mm -hmm. we were told Sally cast a spell on the people of Ngochi. They were sleeping, so when they were drumming and dancing, they could not hear. It also caused rain oh. to fall on the wall. Mm. And because the wall had already been desecrated a portion, the, the rain also made further the softening of the wall. And on that day, mm. he offered the last libation in okay. Ngochi. Okay. And then he gave a sword to Akwede. That we have there. The that sword is called the Dag of uh, Liberation. So okay. after offering the prayer, he pierced the wall. Mm. And that portion fell. And the people playing Musago and singing, they moved out backwards out of the, the wall. And left the wall. City. They walked backwards. They escaped, but yeah, they walked they, backwards, backwards yeah, like dwarves. Escaped, yes, yes. Okay. They walked backwards. That is why even today, that drum when they are playing, it, they dance backwards. Oh. Let me say good. Oh, who say good? So drum. there's a dance. Yeah, there is a dance. Oh, okay. Call me say good. Oh, who say good? And when they are dancing, they dance backwards. Mm. Now, when they left Ngochie, they came to San Chevye. The place was called Chebe because when they came, they planted beans. Okay. And when the time for them to leave, some of them say, oh, let us harvest the beans before we depart. Okay. Oh, okay. So there is a town now in Ngoche called Chebe. Yeah. And the people they are related to, the people here. And even the people oh. in Ngoche are related to us. Mm -hmm. So, um, when they were there also, a king from, um, a king came to visit Vanya, who was a tribal leader. Now, this man came and he fell in love with Vanya's sister, called Asongwe. Okay. And the uh, relationship resulted in pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And so, they had a boy called Pune. Mm. When Pune grew up, you know, so Pune's father was not the woman. Okay. The father was from, uh, he was from another tribe. Okay. But now he, he came and had an affair with a Dobo woman. Mm. And the son was Pune. So when Pune grew up, the uncle of Vanya made him the king of the Pune people of the Dubo people. And they gave him the name Srin. Okay. okay. Srin is a title, it's the highest title among the Dubo people. Mm. And that Srin also means revere him. The people who should be revered uh, is the Srin man. Now, so um, Srin was the first king of the Dubo people. So all the other every kings they were elders, like uh, mm -hmm. 
the, the, the king of uh, whole people now. Okay. When they were there, he was not the king. Oh, okay. As I was it not was the king. Three, you are, you, you, it, it was three who was the, the, the overall, overall of the, all the Dogbo people. Okay, so then you mentioned Tobi Afede. Yeah. Who used his dagger to yeah, help? Tobi Aso. Tobi Aso. It was Aso who used the dagger. Okay, yeah. so then um, where was he? No, Aso was also one of the elders. But he wasn't a king. No, he wasn't a king. Okay. Just like uh, Gabu Sutu, he was also not a king. They only had one king in Moche. And that was three. Yeah, that was three. Okay. That was three. So the elders, the kings that we have, became kings when they settled at their present states. Mm -hmm. Like Aso also became a king of, if I, he had three, three sons, and they all, and after there was one of them. Oh. Yeah. So um, when they came, when they came here, then they started to establish the various every state that we have, that are queenies uh, for the Hohe people. Then the the Peki also had their own. We'll, we'll state. come to the Ewe states. Yeah. So they they, they left Ngochi mm -hmm. and Davanya and all the others. Then Sri also. Then De, Kodo De, Gabusu, they all left. Those were the leaders. They, they were the leaders. They were the okay. leaders. And so, then they, mm -hmm. they took them to their present states. So Vanya led the Angrons to where we are now. Okay. Vanya led the Anglos yeah. to where they are now. Yes. But Sri uh, was uh, um, Sri higher was, than yeah, Vanya. Yeah, but, but he was his nephew. She was nephew, nephew to, to Venya. Venya. Yeah. But he was his overlord. Yes, because okay. he was a king that oh. he gave to them. The king so they gave. settled on which land? When they came, they started to from Chevye. Mm. Some came and settled in uh, Kliko. Mm. Some came to uh, Afipe. And some also came to settle here. Now, when they left Clico, uh, then they moved to Achitati. Okay. From Achitati, they crossed, there's a ticket. Then they crossed and reached Keji. So when they reached Keji, they saw the sea for the first time. Oh. And they exclaimed, We are now on sand. Near Keji. Okay. Keji sand like uh, Ketuma and them. Now, they call the place Keji. Then they moved westwards and they came to Keta. Okay, so as they moved, mm, they, they started, formed different states. Yeah, they were leaving people to settle on those on different, areas. Okay. So Keji too, they left people to settle in Keji. Okay. When they came to Keta, that's the head of the sand. They also left people to settle in Keta. Okay, okay. Then they moved to Tegbi. Okay. And then I made the deity there, Tegba. Okay. That's how the Ewes, the Anglos, yeah. um, got to settle on smaller lands settlements, like, settlements, okay, yeah. like Tegbi, yeah, Keta. There, there are 36 of the settlements Okay. where the relatives settled. So there are 36, 36. Um, states yes. under the Anglos. Yeah. Okay. We'll hold that for mm. the next episode. Okay. We've been learning about the Anglos and their migration story. We've heard about Togbi Agokoli. We've heard about Togbi Chali and his twin brother Chala. And we've also learned about how the Ewes or the Anglos, the Anglo subgroup of the Ewes, got to settle on smaller settlements. We'll delve more into the conversation in the subsequent episodes. This is People and Places, and my name is Wanda. I'm Hagen. <laughs>